Hallelujah. 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 Let's get to the word. Let's get to the word. Let's get to the word. I got to release this. I have to release this. I have to release this. And time just keep on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. Hallelujah. 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 Mark, Mark 16. Mark 16. Mark 16. Mark 16. Verse 15 through 18. Mark 16, 15 through 18. Hallelujah. If you don't have it, it's on the screen for you. It says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, somebody shout these signs. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Somebody shout these signs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, we, we, we began in this series of all things spiritual couple of weeks ago and uh, it began with uh, Elder Maxine and she talked to us about spiritual maturity and then last week uh, pro uh, evangelist Latrice came and, and she talked to us about uh, spiritual warfare and this week we're going to talk about spiritual climate amen somebody shout spiritual climate hallelujah spiritual climate look at your neighbor and say shift the climate Hallelujah. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, shift the climate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all making some noise over here like God is already doing something. Amen. Hallelujah. Shift the climate. Amen. <clears throat> Listen. In the natural we know of a thing called global warming. Global warming, this has been a thing um, since, since the, the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, kind of headed by uh, Vice President Al Gore, uh, talking about climate change. And uh, climate change is something that uh, the, the, the scientists believe that we are experiencing now, uh, that we are seeing things different now, climate-wise, uh, weather-wise, we're seeing things different now than we have seen in the past. And they're saying it's because of global warming and climate change. Amen? And, and, and so, uh, however, um, they, 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 this is what they say um, is causing this. They say that when the sun's rays shines down upon the earth, it says that some of the rays pass through the earth's atmosphere and it allows, it, it, it allows uh, the earth to get warm. When it passes through, it allows the earth to get warm, amen? But some of the rays, they don't pass through and they go back to, they go back to the atmosphere and to the sun and to, and to the space, amen? And so what, what they're saying is what's happening, what's causing the rays that actually do pass through, uh, that, that's passed through the atmosphere, what's causing it to get warmer over time is all the gases that we continue to give off, the gases, the carbon dioxide, they're saying that the carbon dioxide causes the sun's rays to get trapped here in the earth amen and what what's happening is when the sun's rays gets trapped here and it can't go anywhere else it causes the earth to get warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer amen and so 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 when we when we continue to give off all of these gases and these gases continue to trap the 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 the, the sun's rays the, the earth just keep getting warmer and warmer amen and so watch this they they saying that uh, this is why we're experiencing more hurricanes than ever before. 
And they're saying this is why the hurricanes continue to grow worse and worse over time. They're saying this is, this is the reason we're seeing so many tornadoes all across the land. This is the reason why we're experiencing rising sea levels uh, because the snow-capped mountains are melting, the icebergs are melting into the sea and it's causing the sea levels to rise. And they're, they're saying that we're not seeing as much snow on the top of mountains like we used to. Uh, they, they, they're saying that uh, we, when, we, when we look at uh, all of these things, when we look at our falls and winters, our falls and winters don't look Look like they used to look when we were younger. Amen. Our falls are getting warmer. Amen. Our winters are getting warmer. I remember, uh, I believe it was last year, if not last year, the year before last, on Christmas Day, it was 70 degrees outside. Now, I know this is Mississippi, but my God, I'm still dreaming of a white Christmas. I ain't got no talkers in there. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. And so, so, so listen, listen, when, when we look at this, and, and you got one side that believes in climate change and you got another side that's fighting against it saying we don't believe in all of that. Can I tell you about me? I believe in climate change. Come on. I believe in climate change. And, and let me tell you, I'm not talking about in the natural sense. But I'm talking about in the spiritual sense. Amen. Can I, can I get about five or six or seven of y'all in the room that can lift your hands and say, I also believe in climate change. Come on. I believe that we are able to change the climate. I believe that we are able as children of God to shift atmospheres. I believe that we are able to walk into a room and it should look differently when we walk in there versus when we wasn't. I ain't got no talkers in here. I believe in climate change. Somebody just high five your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I believe I believe in it. I believe in it. I believe in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so the Bible, the Bible even warns us of a climate change. The Bible warns us of a climate change. It warns us that uh, men will become lovers of themselves. It warns us that homosexuality and perversion will, will grow rapid. Come on. It warns us that mothers will be against their daughters and, and fathers will be against their sons. It warns us of wars and rumors of wars. It warns us that the love of many will wax colder and colder. But guess what? If we looked at those scriptures in today's language and in today's terms, then we will say it something like this, that uh, today men will become lovers of themselves meaning they will become all about themselves men will be thinking all about themselves and when I say men I'm talking about mankind I'm talking about you two women they ain't got no talkers in here uh, we, will, we will become lovers of our own selves and it'll always be about me they ain't got no talkers in here I said it'll always be about me that's why we always find folks handing out business cards that's why we always find folks building their own websites and, and that's why we got social media sites now and everybody building their platform and because they, they want to be higher and higher they want high status they want to be virtual. They want to go worldwide. Come on, they want their names out there and they're promoting themselves with what we call selfies. Ain't got no talkers in here. Uh, if we read, we read that scripture in today's terms, we'll say something like this. Uh, men will become openly uh, in relationships with other men. Women will be in open relationships with other women ain't got no talkers in here uh, if we saw that in today's language we'll be saying something like men will be transitioning into women come on and women women will be transitioning into men ain't got no talkers come on we'll be saying something like gay marriages are running rapid come on gay marriages in the land gay couples are adopting other children come on and now we're seeing gay families being raised up y'all quiet if we read that in today's language, we'll say something like mothers are neglecting to nurture and raise their children in the right manner. We'll say something like fathers are abandoning their children uh, before, they, before the children ever step foot into the world. Come on. Uh, we, we saw that in this scripture today when we say wars and, and rumors of wars. We'll think about the gangs that are out here in our streets, running our streets. Come on. We'll think about gang wars. We'll think about drug turf wars. We'll think about race wars. We'll think about gender wars. We'll think about political wars. We'll even think about church wars and denominational wars. I ain't got no talkers in here. Wars in the workplace. Wars in the home. Wars even in the mind. But I come to tell somebody that there's about to be a shift in the climate. Somebody speak to your atmosphere right there and somebody shall shift the climate. 
shift the climate. And this climate that we're seeing is not only in America, but it's all over the globe. It's all throughout the earth. And so, so we, can look, we can look in other areas, we can look in other places, and we can see selfish people. Y'all quiet. We can look in other areas and we can see homosexuals. We can look in other areas and we can see sexual perversion taking place. We can look in other areas and we can see wars going on. We can see violence. We can see all of this stuff. The love of many growing colder and colder. But there's about to be a shift. I don't know about y'all, but, but I just believe that when the church rise up and be the church. Don't get quiet on me this morning. Come on. I said when the church rise up and be the church, I believe that we can see climate change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The body of Christ, we are called to be reformers, not conformers. Hmm? We're called to be informers, not conformers. Y'all quiet in here. We are called to be transformers, not conformers. We get so caught up in conforming that we forget all the rest of the forms. We get so caught up in conforming to, to what our partners think we ought to look like. Come on. We get so caught up in, in, in conforming to what our friends think we ought to look like and doing what our friends want us to do and talking how our friends are talking and, and, and doing what our loved ones say we should do even though we feel like a call on our life that we should be doing something different. We just believe that just because grandmama said I, I'm supposed to be a doctor or I'm supposed to be a lawyer that that's what I'm supposed to do. Well, maybe God didn't call you to be a doctor and a lawyer. Maybe God called you to be something else, but he's still going to raise you up to be great. I ain't got no talkers in here. We got to learn to do what God has called us to do and not conform to the opinions of men. Whenever we find ourselves in certain climates, whenever we find ourselves in certain situations, the body of Christ ought not to conform to it, but we ought to be ones who transform it. Ain't got no talkers in here. We ought to be the ones that reform it. If it needs restructuring, we ought to go in there and restructure it. Ain't got no talkers. If, we, if, if it needs something, if it needs stability, we ought to be the ones that go in there and give it stability. We ought not be the ones in there making it unstable because some environments are already stable until some of us walk in it. Y'all quiet in here today. I said some places are already stable until some of us walk in. When we walk in and we get the line, we get the gossip, and we get the backbite, we get the talking about one another. And what, what, what was stable now becomes instable. When what was instable was supposed to become more stable when you walked in there because I'm a child of God. Somebody shout shift the climate. Hey. Come on, shout shift the climate. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm supposed to be teaching. But I told my wife the other day, I said, I feel a treaching anointing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to teach and preach to you at the same time. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, shift the climate. The world that we are living in this cannot be the world that God envisioned. This cannot be the world that he saw in the beginning. What, 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 what we are experiencing in life today, this cannot be what God saw when he stepped into a void place and shouted, let there be light. This cannot be what he, what he thought about when he created and formed man in his image. Come on. He didn't think about us uh, when he created a woman for the man. He didn't think about uh, uh, Adam starting to like Steve instead of Eve. I just don't believe he saw that in the beginning. Come on, somebody. I just don't believe that that was his vision. I don't believe that that was his plan. So this cannot be what we are seeing. This cannot be what he strategically planned in the beginning. But we are experiencing it because of the sin of man. And because the climate doesn't look like what it was originally intended to look like, 
When God raised up people with his spirit, then guess what? We are to do just like he did when he stepped into a dark place. I ain't got no talkers in here. I said we are to do just what he did when he stepped into a dark place. Some of y'all step into dark places every time you go home. Some of y'all step into dark places every time you go to that hellious job. I ain't got no talkers in here. Some of y'all go to a dark place every time you, every time you uh, step in, into, into your car and it's just you in there. I'm trying to help somebody. Listen, I just, I just believe, I just believe that God is getting ready to do something in our lives because he's saying, I need somebody to shift the atmosphere. I need somebody to shift the climate. But first, there got to be a shift in you. Uh, there first have to be a shift in you. So watch this. Let's get to the text. That was just my intro. Hallelujah. I still got 20 minutes. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so listen. <laughs> Let's get to the text. The text said that uh, in Mark 16, verse 15, it says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is what we call the Great Commission. Somebody shout the Great Commission. The Great Commission. And when we look at this word commission, we see two words that it can be broken down into. We see mission and co. Mission and co. Amen. We see mission and we see co. And so watch this. This is what God is saying. This is what he's saying. He's saying there's already been a mission established. Your job is to become co-laborers in the mission. Your job is to become co-workers in the mission. Because the mission had began with Jesus and his apostles. Y'all quiet. The mission began with Jesus and the early church. And so he sent them out on a mission. He told them, he said, listen, when I go up, I need y'all to do something for me. I need y'all to go into all of the world and preach the gospel. But they couldn't live forever. So that means when the baton got dropped, somebody else had to come up and be a co-laborer. Come on. When the baton got dropped, somebody else had to pick up the mantle. Somebody else had to pick it up and run with it. And so this is our job. We picked up the, we picked up the baton from the previous generation. And our generation is to run with it until we get tired and we pass the baton on to somebody else. And they pick it up and they run with it. Somebody shout co-laborers. Come on, you got co-workers in the gospel. Some of y'all thought you was in this by yourself, but you got co-workers in the gospel. Come on, you thought you was in this thing all alone, but you got co-workers in the gospel. You got somebody that you can go to and talk to and lean on and depend on and say, I need your help in this. I need advice in this. I need you to run with me in this. Come on, I ain't got no talkers in here. Look at your neighbor and say, where are the co-workers? Where are the co-laborers? I need somebody to help me in this season. He said, go into all the world. The Greek word here for world is cosmos. And it, it means the literal or figurative world. So literal means you can actually go across the entire world. Or figuratively, you can go across whatever your world is. Amen. Uh, but, but, but when we look at the Great Commission over in Matthew 28, 19, it says, go and teach all nations. Okay, when we look at nations here, the Greek word for nations is ethnos, where we get the, uh, the, 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 the term ethnicity, all right? And so in, in the Greek, they said, go, go into all of the ethnos. Go and teach all of the ethnos. Go and teach all nations. So guess what? All nations doesn't necessarily mean overseas. But he said, go and teach all ethnicities. So that means whatever ethnicity is around you that don't look like you, come on, somebody, go and teach them. Y'all quiet up in here. Uh, ethnicity means people groups. It means tribes. It means races. So whatever, whatever race is not yours, go and preach to them. Go teach them. But don't forget about your own. Yeah, y'all quiet. Your people group can be your co-workers at work. 
Uh, I know, I know you said, I know you said, God, I, I just believe that you called me to go and, and, and do some great things. I know you called me to the nations, but you just not, you need to understand what the nation is. Huh? Huh? I know, I know you said that, that God, you called me to sing to the nations, but are you okay with your nation being at the nursing home? Huh? I, I know you're saying, God, I, I just believe that you called me to be a prophet to the nations, but will you be satisfied if your nation is the neighborhood that you grew up in? Ooh. Uh, I need some help in here. I need some help in here. I know you said that, 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 that you called me to be a father to nations, but will you be obedient and go when he said that your nation is the closest orphanage to you? Huh? Uh, you, you, you said, you said, God, I, I just believe that you've called me to this, but are you okay with what he said your nation is? Uh, uh, because, because watch this, this is what happens. This is what happens. We get so caught up in, in, in what we see everybody else doing that we fail to do what God has called us to do. We see everybody else uh, on large platforms and their, their ministry is going worldwide, but, but yet home is being neglected. Yeah. Huh? We see everybody else uh, preaching over there in Africa and we see everybody going to the Europeans and, and going over to Australia and preaching and teaching the gospel. But guess what? We fail to preach the gospel right here in America. Ain't got no talkers in here. America has become one of the greatest mission fields. We got people from other countries coming into America to preach to what was supposed to be a Christian nation. Don't get quiet on me in here today. Come on. I said what was supposed to be a Christian nation, we got other nations coming to preach to us. Because we have become one of the top mission fields all across the globe. Why? Because we're so busy trying to win everybody else that we fell into win at home. Can I just preach to somebody in here real quick? Stop being so concerned about everybody else when your house is jacked up. Stop being so concerned about everybody else ministering when you ain't doing what you're supposed to do in your own house. When your children acting up. When your children hard-headed. You and your wife can't get along. You and your husband fussing and fighting. But you're trying to save everybody else. Look at your neighbor and say, get home. Get home. Get home. Get home in order. Uh, get home in order. Somebody shout, get home in order. I heard the William brothers say something like this. Sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. The Great Commission, go where he send you and shift the climate. I hear that right there. I said, go where he sent you and shift the climate. Go where he told you to go and shift the If that's your house, go back home and shift the climate. trying to win folks on your row at church but the person you laying with every night you ain't won them yet I ain't got no talkers up in here come on you trying to win you trying to win the children in the church when your children uh, hadn't even had any come to the knowledge of Christ yet I wish I had about five or six of y'all in here to look at somebody and say go where he sent you and ship Uh. Because your nation may be that nursing home. 
because there's folks sitting in the nursing home and, and their, their, their climate is this. Their climate is, I'm just going to lay here until I die. But your call, God has called you and sent you there to go and remind them that as long as you got breath in your body, God can still use you. Uh, uh, come on, the climate, the climate, the climate in your neighborhood is this. Well, we've always done it this way, and and because we've always done it this way, we're gonna always do it this way uh, because it's always been done this way. Uh, we've always been broke. We will be broken, and we always come on. I ain't got no talkers in here. Come on, we've been ghetto. We'll always be ghetto, and so we're just gonna stay ghetto. But God has called you and said, go back to your neighborhood and tell your neighborhood, I have called you to be better. Come on. I have called you to come out of the slums. I have called you to come out of the ghettos. I have called you to raise families. I have called you. I know you didn't see a daddy in your house, but I call you to be one. I know you didn't see a good example in your house, but I call you to be the example. I call you to be the pattern. Somebody shall shift the climate. The climate, the climate over there in the orphanage, you got children in there wondering if anybody loved them, wondering if anybody cared for them, saying nobody loved me, they left me here, they sent me here, they left me here, they abandoned me here, nobody cared about me, but your job, God has called you to go into the orphanage because that's your nation, and he said go in there and shift the climate and tell them that your God loves you with an unfailing love, tell them that your God cares about you, he even said cast your cares upon him for he cares for you come on somebody he said go in there and tell them your story tell them about how you was once an orphan too but one day your father sent your big brother to die on a tree to give you the right to be adopted into the family look at somebody and tell your neighbor I've been adopted into the family so I I'm going to tell them you are part of the family too. Shift the climate. I said shift the climate. Ah, my, 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 my. Ah, ah, ah. Gotta move, I gotta move, I gotta move. He said, he said, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Uh, and then he said, he said, he said, uh, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved and, and he that believeth not shall be damned. But watch this verse 17 is where I want to hang my hat. He said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. He said, these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. So first of all, if you ain't got your belief in order, you ain't going to have no signs following. Come on. If you ain't got your faith in order, you ain't going to have no signs following. And so if you don't have anything following you, if you don't have anything chasing behind you, if you don't have nothing that look like God behind you, maybe you need to check your belief. Maybe you need to check your faith. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. So first of all, what are signs? What are signs? I looked at Google. I said, Google, what are signs? I said, Google, what, what is the purpose of signs? What is the purpose of signs? And Google told me, yeah, she, said, she, said, she said, quite simply, Signs are often designed to help individuals recognize or identify a place or brand. For instance, signs help us to identify which restroom to use. I said, ooh, that's good. But I dug a little deeper and I said, Google, tell me some more. She began to talk to me a little more. She said, typically, signs tends to serve a few common purposes. One is to promote, 
or advertise. One is to identify. Another is to provide information. Another is to give directions. And another is to protect from hazards. So I said, God, that's good. And God began to preach to me right there. Can I preach to y'all for just a few seconds? God began to preach to me right there. And he said, he said, he said, he said, God told me, he said, his signs will do the promotion for you. I heard the Lord say, stop putting, stop giving out all them business cards. Come on. He said, stop creating all them flyers and just let my signs do the promotion for you. He said, just let my signs do it for you. Because when, when, when people get, begin to hear that signs and wonders follow you, they'll come and see you. Oh, y'all quiet in the room. God began to tell me, he said, my signs will provide you the necessary information. He said, it will give direction to you as you ride down the road. He said, as you continue to speak in new tongues, and as you speak in tongues of fire, he said, when you get the interpretation, the interpretation will be direction. The interpretation will be where to go and how to move and where to do it. Come on, ain't got no talkers in here. He said, he said, he said my signs will also protect you from the plots, the plans, and the schemes of the enemy. He said, every serpent, he said, I command you to take them up. Come on, somebody. He said, every deadly thing that the enemy try to entice you with, he said, it won't be successful. He said, you're protected from hurt. He said, you're protected from danger. He said, you're protected from pitfalls. He said, you're protected from the lies and the seed of the enemy. He said, no matter what come your way, protection is guaranteed. Why he said that? Because I Isaiah told us that no weapon that's formed against us will ever be able to prosper. These signs shall follow you. Look at somebody and say, depend on the signs. Look at your neighbor and say, depend on the signs. Use the signs to shift the climate. I said, use the signs to shift the climate. So the signs promote me. The signs give me information. They give me direction. And they protect me from hazards. But one other thing that signs do that I love so well, signs are our identifiers. Signs are our identifiers. Signs are what identifies us and let the world know that that's a believer of Christ. <sighs> I said, signs are what lets the people of God know that that right there, that person right there, that's a child of God. That's a child of the king. If don't nobody else know that you're a child of the king, if you ain't never told them, the signs ought to be an identifier for them to know that you are a child of God. Uh, I'm moving. I'm wrapping this up. I'm wrapping this up. Watch this. How can, how can you recognize that I'm a believer if I don't have any identifiers? I wrote this down and it was real good to me. I said, the believer should not go anywhere without at least one sign. That was so heavy. That was so heavy. He said, the believer should not go anywhere without at least one sign. Now he gave you several, but you ought to take along with you everywhere you go, at least one sign. Somebody shout one sign. Uh, listen, listen, how, how, how can you recognize that I'm a believer if I don't have my identifiers? McDonald's would never build a new restaurant across town and leave their old sign where it was. Come on, I ain't got no help in here. KFC would never move into an old Popeye's building and leave the Popeye's sign up. Oh, I wish I had help in here. Fresh Church would never move into an old Fresh building and leave the Fresh sign up. Y'all, y'all quiet in here. I ain't got no help in here. I said, Fresh Church, when they go, the sign is going to follow them. I ain't got no help in the room. Look at your name and tell somebody, when we move, my son moved just like that. I said, when we move, my son moved just like that. Everywhere we go, 
signs follow. Come on. Uh, so watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. These signs shall follow them that believe. He said, number one, in my name they shall cast out devils. He said, they shall speak with new tongues. He said, they shall take up serpents. And he said, uh, uh, they shall drink a deadly thing and it will not hurt them. He said, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I said, you shouldn't go anywhere without at least one of these. Come on, somebody. Whenever you go to work and somebody tell you I got a headache, you ought to have a sign. Y'all quiet in this Anglican church. Ain't got no talkers in here. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, when somebody tell you my stomach hurt, you ought to have a sign for them. You ought to lay your hand upon them and say, be healed in the name of Jesus. Uh, I said, be healed in the name of Jesus. When I looked at all these signs, I saw two words that could sum all of these signs up. Casting out devils. Uh, laying hands on the sick and they recover, taking up serpents, uh, them, 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 them sneaky folks. Come on, y'all don't know what serpents are. Them, 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 sneak, them sneaky folks, them snakes in the grass. Come on, they try to blend in well, but they right, they really there to bite you. Come on, they really there to, to, to poison you. Come on, they really there to, 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 to get that venom inside of you so that you will look like them and act like them and walk like them. And, come on, somebody, they take up serpents. Come on, when you see them, take them up. Don't be scared, don't be scared of them. Uh, so watch this, watch this, watch this. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said, uh, these signs shall follow them. And he said, uh, these, 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 all these signs can be summed up in two words. Y'all know what those two words are? Climate shifters. Climate shifters. Come on, I ain't got no talkers in here. I said climate shifters. That means when I walk into a hospital, I should have a sign following me that should shift the climate. Come on, somebody. I'm walking in a place full of sick people, but I ought to be going to every bed laying hands on her, and the climate ought to change. Come on, somebody. I ain't got no talkers in here. When I go to that job and everybody in on that job, they, they criticize and they backbite and they talking about folks, I ought to be able to go up in there and shift the climate. Come on, I can take up their surface. Come on, and the, the, the deadly stuff that they try to get me with, I can drink it, but it still won't hurt me. Come on, I can shift the climate. Y'all ought to try this next time them folks start getting on your nerves at work. Just use your sign. Go in there and start speaking in tongues. You ought to start going in there, speaking in tongues, and sit the atmosphere, sit the climate. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a climate shifter. I'm a climate shifter. I'm a climate shifter. Ah. Uh. I gotta end this. I gotta end this. I gotta end this. Whatever atmosphere you enter, you have the authority and the ability to shift it. Whatever the attitude is before you got there, when you enter the room, it shifts because you're there. Uh, whatever music they were playing before you got there, Come on, when you walk into there, they ought to recognize that there's something different about you. And they turn off that hellious music and they, and they say, we either gonna listen to nothing or we gonna change into a gospel station. Come on, I ain't got no help in here. Whatever activity they were doing before you got there, they might have been smoking weed, they might have been drinking and cussing and fussing and slipping and tipping and dipping, but whatever they were doing before you got there, when you get there, things ought to look different. When you get there, demons ought to run. When you get to that city, mountains ought to shake. Come on, somebody. When you get over there, rivers ought to dry up. When you get over there, deserts ought to overflow. Come on. When you get there, lives ought to be saved. When you get there, hearts ought to be changed. When you get there, bodies ought to be healed. When you get there, relationships ought to be mended together. Look at your neighbor and say, it's going to shift because I'm there.
Last thing I got to talk about and I'm done. Reflection. 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 I promise you I'm done. There's a song. Y'all know it. On the cops. It's their theme song. It's that bad boys, bad boys. What you going to do when they come for you? Come on. There's a verse in that song that says, born of a mother with the love of a father, reflection comes and reflection goes. Born of a mother with the love of a father, reflection comes and reflection goes. Born of a mother with the love of a father, reflection comes and reflection goes. Watch this. This is what the Lord said. He said, when I create a thing I created to look like me I created it to reflect me watch this you were born of a mother with the love of the father you ought to reflect the father listen watch this watch this if what you are around do not reflect you. You ought to make it look like you want it to look. I'm going to say that again. I said if you are around a thing and it doesn't look like you, look at your neighbor and say make it. If it don't reflect you, make it. Now, the word make right there has two different meanings that I could attach to it. One is I could demand it. And another, I can form it. Uh, one, I can demand it or I can form it. So look at your neighbor and say, if it don't look like you, make it. Now, you can choose whichever definition you want to choose. You can demand it and decree it and it has to be or you can put your hands on it and begin to form it. God gave us an example, didn't he? In the beginning, he stepped into a dark place. He stepped into a place that was null and void and he said, let there be light. He began to demand. He said, let there be light. And there was light. He created day and night. He created the trees. He created, he created the fowl of the air, the, the beast of the field, the, 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 the fish of the sea, and every creeping thing that crawleth upon the earth. He created it all. He separated the land and the waters. He did all of this by what? Demanding it. He said, I need where I am. He stepped into a dark place, but he was full of light. Y'all hear me? He stepped into a null place, but he was full of creativity. And he stepped in there and he said, I'm about to use my creativity and I'm about to make what's around me look like me. <laughs> Somebody better catch this in the spirit. Come on. He said, what's around me doesn't reflect me, so that's a problem. And he created nature. He said, it has to take on my nature. And then he said, you know, this is good and all. But then he said, now let me create something that actually reflects me. Now what I just created reflects my nature, but I need something that reflects me. So when he decided to create something that actually reflected him, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't demand it, but he formed it. I wish I had somebody in here. I said he didn't demand it. He began to pick up the dirt and he formed it. So I heard the Lord say, y'all stand. I heard the Lord say that in this next season of your life, you have one job. He said, in this next season of your life, you have one job. And he said, that job is to shift the climate. He said, shift the climate. He said, shift the climate. If it don't look like you, make it.
if it don't look like you or if it don't look like you want it to look you get to that new job and you like this one look like my old one but you tired of changing jobs go in there and you say I'm about to either demand this thing or I'm about to put my hands on it and something gonna have to give come on something gonna have to shake come on ain't got no help in here listen listen I'm not an apostle just in the church but I carry my apostolic nature everywhere I go so even when I was uh, just a rookie on the police department at the police department there in West Point I began to go in there and, and shift things the reason why I don't, I don't even want to say it like this but the reason why I, I, I can go in there and, and do the things that I do on the job is because of the apostolic nature that I carry. I went there and I saw that some things were in place that, 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 that shouldn't be and there were some things out of place that needed to be in place. And so I began to go in there and I, 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 I type up stuff, I type up ideas, the things that come to my head, I type up these ideas, I pass it on to the chief and the chief say, yeah, that's a good thing, let's, let's implement it. What's not there, let's put it there. We have a, we have a, we have a, a DUI unit now. We have a, a K-9 unit now because of, because of me. Because I went to them and I said, we need a K-9 unit. And we worked on getting a K-9 unit. We got the K-9 unit. I told them, I said, in the summertime, we need a traffic unit to go out there and let's tear the streets up so that we can keep these folks uh, from coming out during this pandemic. He said, all right, create your team, get it going. We created a traffic unit. We had zero crime all through the summer. I told him, I said, we need a, we need a, a SOG unit, we need a, a, a SRT team, a, a strategic response team, so that whenever we have a, a high quality uh, situation, that, that, that we, we have a, a high stress situation, we need a, a, a team that's able to go in there and do what they need to do. They said, get it done. We got a strategic response team. I don't just carry my anointing in here, but I carry it everywhere I go. And if I was to change jobs, I'm not going to leave that anointing in West Point. But I'm going to take it wherever the Lord send me. I looked around in West Point and I said, we need more things for these young people to do. I said, all these other cities got travel baseball teams, travel basketball teams, stuff for their, for, stuff for their young people to do. So I said, why we can't have that? So I used my apostolic nature and I created us a whole organization that, that, that can help kids get, 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 get put into sports and, and grow from it. We, 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 we already got a couple of baseball teams. I had this waiting on the city to open the parks back up. I don't know what they're waiting on. Y'all watching me too. Y'all better open them parks up. Amen. In Jesus' name. Then, then right before the pandemic hit, we were starting a, a basketball team. Whatever, whatever you see need to be shifted. Shifted. Huh? You see something in your life that don't reflect you, make it. Lift those hands. Hmm. Listen, I'm not going to lay hands on you, but if you are here today and you can say, God, I'm ready for you to make me a climate shifter. I want you to just step out into this middle aisle. I want to be a climate shifter. I want to be a climate shifter. I want you to step out into that middle aisle. I want you to just... Step out and lift those hands. Come on. I want you to just step out and lift those hands. 
God, whatever atmosphere I go into, I want to be able to speak a thing. I want to be able to decree a thing, and it happens for me. God, that same anointing that the apostle carried to change things in his atmosphere, God, I want to carry that same anointing. God, if that's, if, if that's you, I want you to just move out into this aisle. I want you to move out into this aisle. That's a step of faith right there. That's a step of faith. You know, saying, God, I believe that you carry that authority, and because you carry that authority, I know that you are able to impart that same authority in me.